some of you might know me. Um, but this time I actually wanted to talk about security because I'm uh, super passionate about it and uh, quite frankly we've uh, seen a lot of really scary cases of you know security problems if I may say so that relates to uh, CMSs like WordPress and the other guys which I'm you know, not going to mention but there are people like Joomla and all that. So, um, it is a concern, and a concern is not just to the level of an individual website getting hacked and the person who owns the website getting hacked. There is an ecosystem that is affected when, when something like that happens, and that encapsulates even up to the country level. So this is something I do for Malaysia as well. I'm, I'm also consulting with the National Security uh, Board and uh, you know, working on our policies with regard to national level uh, IT adaptation. Uh, things like cloud computing and so on. So, uh, one thing that I wanted to share is that you know, let's all come together. Uh, if at all, I could do something uh, today, and that is to to tell people about what you know, what are the first steps you need to secure the WordPress site. And uh, please do not uh, do not uh, feel shy to ask any questions. Raise your hand. I would love if you want to ask questions right where I'm actually speaking. Just raise your hand. And hopefully we could make a discussion rather than a one-way thing. Okay, without further ado, let me just go through a little bit of introduction of what I'm going to talk about. So it's simple. It's actually, um, it's no rocket science. What I'm going to try and do, it's actually so important, it's something that I keep telling my colleagues in the, in the security world, that security needs to be first and foremost easy to understand. Because I can tell you all kinds of things like a, uh, how a packet look like and what are the headers and what are the payloads. If it doesn't, if you don't get it, then I lost the opportunity to, to tell an audience what to do next with security. So I think it's a it's a it's a grand responsibility for people uh, who do this these talks to ensure that the, the target audience understands and take home one of these ten things that you do today after today. I have done my job. I'm, I've succeeded in ensuring that your WordPress site is one level up already. So I hope I, I'm able to do that. That is why I, I, I ask of your, uh, of your you know, participation, because you know, if something that you don't understand, I'll take all the time needed, whether it's in this session or maybe outside, to try and help um, you know, secure your site. At least the first few easy ones, okay? So that's the topics that we want to cover. Hopefully we have the time to really cover everything as much detail as possible. It's a very short period, we've got like half an hour. So those who, um, I don't know if you can bring chairs in, but if you want to bring chairs in, I guess you can. So feel free to find chairs, maybe the organizers can help. So what are our WordPress assets? Uh, this is also an important slide, and I was thinking about this slide, because it's not just WordPress binaries, you know, not just the software that you put into your web server. So what does your WordPress asset consist? It actually consists of everything from if you are into the networking model, if you've gone to college and you've learned this, the OSI model, so from the physical right up to the application layer. So all of these things are your assets. So we're talking about things like the physical server, the network, the switches, the firewalls you put in between, the load balancers, even up to the provider that you use. These are all your assets if you look at it, you know. If you just take WordPress itself, the binary, the software that comes with the tarball file, that's alone one component. It's not everything. There is other components that are interrelated and equally important when you, when you look at the an, an ecosystem of running a WordPress site. And last WordCamp in KL held in this particular venue, we also had a lot of uh, a lot of exposure, a lot of talk about IoT integration when it comes to WordPress. Which means you take your WordPress site and extend it beyond just a physical server. You put things like nodes around. And I've seen one demonstration where this guy actually used a WordPress site and actually monitored plantation using IoT, you know, and then it, it feeds the data back into WordPress. So when you talk about assets, you know, we have to look at everything that interconnects back to your WordPress site, not just not just the actual binary or the server that is running. Okay, so we, we're going to look into more details and things like APIs. APIs is a big thing today, and and, and you know, businesses are, are, are created from API. Literally, people are selling API as a service. You know, like, I was just talking to Sam. He, he did push notification, the beautiful notifications you get on the app. He did not necessarily went and asked Google or, or, or Apple to, 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 have, to allow him to do the push API, to do the push messages. Instead, he just 
render the service that actually does that. So API is also another big thing with WordPress. It's got lots of APIs that can interconnect other web websites, can interconnect other services, and also things like IoT devices. If I'm going too fast, somebody just throw something at me. <laughs> so I'm going to try and slow down. Yeah. <laughs> so make sure the bottle is empty first. Yeah. Okay, here's a very important message that I want to bring it up, and it's really it's about. I'm, I'm just going to quickly adjust the microphone. So I have to. Sorry about that. So security is for all. Let's just stop there for a while and think about what I'm, what, what this slide is trying to say. It's actually. Um, I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I, I don't officially represent the, the, the WordPress organization, but I do definitely represent people like you and I who are part of the community. You know, so the responsibility of the community does not. Uh, it, it, it's it's a collaboration. It's a it's a cohesion of all people, all kinds of uh, people who use WordPress. Like uh, for example, um, if if you have um, deployed WordPress and it's insecure and WordPress get compromised. People hack. It gets into a statistic, and then the statistics will say, "Oh, another WordPress site get hacked." You know. So, as responsible users, as responsible uh, system admins, and also system and integrators, it is important that we take this opportunity to not only just secure our site, but also bring that confidence back into society, bring the confidence back into the WordPress community. So that's the message I'm trying to say. So it's for all. So people here, they are, they are developers. I spoke to some developers. Uh, they are people who are who wrote beautiful plugins and themes. And everyone needs to be in, co in cohesion to this. And everyone needs to to be part of this um, effort to secure WordPress because it's an ever growing platform. Like last WordPress, if I'm not mistaken, it was 20 something percent of the world's websites running WordPress. And today we hit, I think, 30 percent. Is that correct, Mr. Sam? 30 percent of the world's website. That's Huge! I'm saying it like Donald Trump. That's huge. <laughs> yeah. that's tremendous. That's huge. You know, that's huge. I mean, if you think about it, that's that's literally a part of the world. Websites. If you take a stone and throw at one website, there's a one third chance it's going to hit a WordPress site. You know, that's literally like that. So it's it's crazy. Uh, so in order for us to keep growing, uh, we need to have all of these ecosystems thought of. Things like. Um, Protecting, in fact, uh, dare, dare I say, protecting the interests of WordPress itself, and that's people like us, you and I, people who deploy, people who write code, people who build themes, build plugins. We have that responsibility to ensure that our sites are, you know, secure, so that we contribute to a positive growth of WordPress. And let's hope by next year we get 35, and the same conference today, you know. So let's keep growing that. So what are the what are the things that can happen when you when you get compromised? So if you run a business, if you run a blog, if you run anything, everything comes down to reputation. And you you have things like search engine reputation. You have things like human reputation. You have things like machine learning reputation. So all of these things will contribute to whether or not you are a reliable source for information. See, Google's interesting. Google says, "I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put you up in the top ranks because you are you have a lot of." Uh, keywords, I'm going to put you up because you have a reputation. Google is all about reputation. So if people visit you so much to get notes, let's say you're a photographer and you use uh, sorry, you use um, WordPress to put up your stuff there. So if you, if you keep giving good photography tips on how to change the frame rates, how to make this, how to do this, how to do that, and people start to say, oh, he's a very reliable or she's a very reliable source for, for photography information. You know, so, but then when you start to get hacked and, and then malware starts to get in and then people start to get infected, Google can completely block you out. You don't even end up in the top 10 anymore. So that, that the implication could go right down to your business. It comes down to economics. So economics matter. I was just talking to a, to a friend from India yesterday. She was, she's from the US and we were talking about how to get politicians to listen to technology is by telling them what the economic impact is going to be. That's the only way you can get through them. Otherwise, they will just go like, what, 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 WordPress, what, 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 security, what, what, what. But if you tell them, it's going to cost you two billion US dollars per year. Oh, let's talk. Let's come to my room, you know. So economic impact is, is important when we also approach uh, in terms of security. All right? Reliability, validity, and so on and so forth. And then there's the blacklisting uh, factor. Check this out. This is an interesting statement that I want to put out and you know, people should take note of. Each week, Google blacklists 20,000 sites for malware and 50,000 for phishing. That's a wrong spelling for phishing, but phishing. Got a lisp. 
Yeah, so that, that's, don't be part of that statistics. You know, let's try and do something. Let's see what we can do today in the next um, 35 minutes that I have. So more statistics, I'm just going to very quickly run through that. And this is the, the one on the top right of yours. That's your statistics. And statistics show that more than 50% of online hacks are resulting from websites. Websites not necessarily just WordPress, sites that you build from scratch, from frameworks. We talk a lot about frameworks just now, PHP frameworks and so on. Those are the sites uh, also part of contribution, but if you focus and say, okay, who, who are the biggest source of security vulnerabilities, that's going to be our good old websites, right? If you look at the one bit below, top uh, right bottom, that's the OWASP top 10 list of vulnerabilities, and they, they are so consistent. I'll show you some statistics on that as well. So if you look at products, products that are top in the, in the ranking of usage, there is a correlation. This is pure pure probability. You know probability how it works, right? If you have 10 things, if you have 10 um, possibilities and, and each of those possibilities represent a value, let's say if you go out, there's a possibility you're going to have uh, 10 people or 8 people going to speak about, for example, coding and 2 people are going to talk about infrastructure, infrastructure meaning security, like what I'm doing, 8 people are going to talk to um, about coding. So there is a chance, there's a higher chance of you, if you walk in blind and walk into a room, you will probably hit the higher likeliness of hitting or going to a, a talk that is more code based. Because that's what probability is, is the, the, the numbers matter. So when you look at that and you put that into context of WordPress, for example, you will always have a high number of uh, security problems with relate to <coughs> WordPress product. That's not because it's super vulnerable, but because it is so used. It is so used, and therefore the probability goes higher. The simple mathematics to figure that one out. So it's not necessarily it's more vulnerable, it's just that there's more use. When there's more use, there's more uh, statistics that will be contributed. The same goes with uh, Linux versus Windows argument, you know, because Windows is like 95% of the world's population that use them, or more like 90%. And if you say uh, what are the top vulnerabilities, the Windows always comes up because that's where everyone's targeting. And if I'm a hacker, if I'm a hacker and I want to become famous, who do I target? Do I target ABC CMS or do I target WordPress CMS? You see what I mean? If I want to be famous, I target the famous boys, you know, or girls, you know. I, I target the famous platform. So that's how it works. That's pure probability. So that's why I'm showing you some of the popular list of apps and operating systems that you can, that was, you will see a lot when you go into CVE databases or security databases and find them uh, showing up everywhere sometimes. And if you look at the statistics here, this is zooming into WordPress itself by the CVE foundation, the CVE, sorry not foundation, CVE uh, uh, vulnerability database. So basically they're saying the biggest one is XXS cross-site scripting, so I hope you know what that is. Anyone who's not familiar with XSS? Got a call from me. Anyone's, everyone familiar with cross-site scripting? It's actually a big problem. Although it might not directly, it, it, it comes down to reputation. Cross-site scripting can come down to reputation. You, 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 you bring people into, um, uh, you, you give your users, you expose your users, you expose vulnerability to your user. So that's important and that's like the number one top uh, security problem when it comes to WordPress according to the CVE. <clears throat> and so this is what's very important that I was want, and I wanted to share with you about this as well. So those statistics basically mean that we have a responsibility and it's real. Look at the statistics, it's real. Um, in 2018 alone there are 10 vulnerabilities that are reported in CVE for WordPress, the uh, latest version of WordPress. So it is a continuous battle for everyone, all parties and so on. And also it's not just um, not just the developers, not WordPress, not all guys, it's also us that actually uh, help to contribute to the number of statistics. This is the vulnerability, but the amount of hacks that come from the vulnerability is not limited to this. Sometimes some of the vulnerabilities don't even get disclosed. It's, it's hidden. So I come to this uh, statement, I love this particular statement from Isaac Newton and he didn't say it but he, he repeats it, he says if I have seen further than others is by standing upon the shoulders of giants. It's a beautiful saying that says if, if we want to progress we use the, the success of uh, people before us and that's actually a very powerful ethos of uh, open source. Open source is built upon the success. For example, what is PHP's language? Everyone? Anyone? 
what is the web language for PHP, for, for, for WordPress? <coughs> PHP, right? So PHP is not developed by the WordPress people. It is developed by the people who develop PHP. And PHP runs on what web servers? Apache, for example, right? So Apache is developed by someone else. What Apache sits on? Sits on Linux operating system or Windows, of course, Windows being closed source, but let's talk about just the open source part. Linux built by you know, people who build the Linux operating system. So if you can see, the success of every one depends, it's, it's, it's a domino effect, you know? So the success moving forward <coughs> when it comes to WordPress is the same thing. So we, we sit upon the success of the people before us. And that's a very important statement. So it is a joint responsibility from all of us to ensure that, you know? <coughs> Okay, so let me very quickly go through this top 10. The first thing is choose right. Choose right meaning you've got two options, okay? You've got hosted, you have some of our uh, uh, beautiful sponsors out there that actually have a one-click WordPress uh, uh, deployment, you know, like you click one and you, you're off, you go running. Or you've got some options to run it bare metal, meaning you install it yourself. I do both, I, I depends on what I want to achieve. If, it, if I want it fast, I will do it with people like Exabytes, for example, or people like Azure or AWS, who or RunCloud, for example, who can actually just, you know, on a click of a button, get your WordPress up and running. Or if you are like, you know, sometimes you need to customize it further, you want to do it your own different way, deploy it on your own servers, for example, back in your office, then you don't have the cloud function, you have a local deployment function that you need to install it from scratch. So each of them have their goods and bads. So I'm just going to jump straight into the considerations and things that you should pay attention to. So when you're hosted, uh, you have to understand that providers do not necessarily care about you. It is generic. It is generic meaning they, they care about the servers. They don't care about your application. What you run on it, they won't scan it. They won't figure it out. So it's something you have to understand. But if you do it yourself, there's a good chance you are going to take care of it. So bear that in mind. Providers will not give you extended security. Will not give, they probably give you a baseline security. It's up to you then to make it better. Um, they are also shared resource. Now, shared resource is, is good and also extremely bad. Um, this happened to our one of our customers, and they actually put some of the servers on a very famous website provider. Uh, but it's shared. So what happened was this website provider had, I think, about 15 sites running or so. One of it was uh, another CMS, which I'm not going to mention, and that get hacked. That got hacked and it dropped a crypto miner into the operating system. And you know what crypto miner does, right? It's gonna max out your CPU. So what happens is every site got affected. So just to bear that in mind, if you run into uh, a bigger capacity, if you wanna run into bigger capacity, maybe it's time to move out of shared hosting. So shared hosting means shared of the good things, but more importantly to remember, it's also sharing the bad stuff, okay? Uh, so there's another problem also that's like uh, shared hosting, we all know that and that it's difficult to do OS level functionalities because they won't allow you to because it's shared. You're not exclusive to that server, you're sharing with other people, okay? So you don't have customized stuff that I will mention in my slides on, on securing that you might not have with hosted providers. Um, so here's another very important point that is the hosted guys likely do not maintain your site they just maintain their servers they maintain what they provide they will not maintain your site so you need to actively do it so it's do not rely on hosting people to secure your site alone you have to actively uh, do it yourself um, the other side bare metal it can be uh, quite trivial to make mistakes so if you're not familiar you do not know Linux or you do not uh, no deployment of Linux systems or Windows systems, then this might not be the route for you. The bigger thing that you need to consider is when you deploy, if you don't understand the risk of you causing something, a uh, security problem is higher than you go with a hosted provider which has some level of security. So if I had to compare, if you do not have knowledge, if, you, if you're still learning, I would still go with a shared hosted provider. Okay, just to set that uh, tone very clearly. Um, the difficulty level does get higher as you start installing and if you run into problems you need to challenge it yourself as opposed to using for example Plesk or, or cPanel where by provider you just click with next, 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 next and off you go, the your site is running. So you're maintaining it at all levels also. So not, for, not to forget, when you are in a shared hosting environment, you just maintain WordPress, right? But if you are in your own environment, you're maintaining WordPress, you're maintaining your firewall, you're maintaining your operating system, your databases, 
and your web server. So you are actively maintaining the whole ecosystem on your, on your site, so you need to have some knowledge of all of them. I, do, I wouldn't say you need to have super deep knowledge, but you need to have some knowledge of that entire thing that you are uh, keeping into your service, right? Um, so that's a <laughs> Spider-Man statement. With great power comes great responsibility, which means since you have root access, I would assume you build yourself, you have root access, it means you have also a real responsibility to make sure that you do not, um, you know, mess things up. Yeah, it's a very powerful account, of course. Okay, so after you've done all the installation, I recommend you to try one of these. Uh, uh, these are stuff that I'm recommending. It's not necessarily the best. This is stuff that I use. So that, that I can only recommend things that I have familiarity with. I can recommend things that I've used. So these are the things I use. So not necessarily the best and not necessarily promoting any, but these are the stuff I use. If you have not done this uh, so, uh, if not done them already, please immediately try and deploy them at the end of the session. Go into the WordPress marketplace, look for iThemes, for example, install it and do some scans to make sure that whether the hosting provider or your own uh, deployment is, is good and secure. The next thing is authentication. Authentication is, what is authentication? Everyone will think of passwords, obviously, right? So um, WordPress has many plugins to introduce something called two-form factor. What is two-form factor? Uh, there are multiple factors when it comes to authentication. Something you know, which is your password something that is you, which is biometrics, and something that is uh, that is with you, for example, like a smart card. Okay, so these three uh, options when you do two, two or more factor authentication. So instead of just providing a password, I'm also going to send you a tag. Everyone has used online banking before. Why does it require you to get a tag when you do a transfer? Uh, that's only because it's another layer of security. Yes, you have already logged in to Maybank to you, for example, or, or whatever. But if you want to start to do actual transaction when it comes to money, you ask for a tag. So that gets an additional layer of security. So if you've not done that already today, go and enable two form factor authentication for your admin accounts at least. Okay, that will just eliminate something called brute forcing uh, attacks. Okay, that's already going to eliminate a lot of uh, possible people trying to guess passwords. Use complex. <coughs> Complex and long passwords. I got a game later. I'm going to play with you. So um, that's something to do with the size. <coughs> so avoid re uh, or, or rename common admin users. I'm not a big fan of this, but this is somewhat true. You see what happens is, I would say 98% of the reason why people find vulnerable sites is because people use default settings. Default setting means my admin user is actually called admin, and my database is actually called wp underscore. All the tables are called. So it's easy to guess. So the people who actually want to look for you are not humans, they're actually machines. They are scanners. And when the scanner finds something interesting about your site that is using defaults, you will be the first to get hacked. Okay? Unless you are, for example, you run a government agency, for example, and somebody wants to make an active effort to hack you, then you will have human doing it. But there's a good chance that most of the hacks you see today with WordPress or any other CMS is using bots. It's actually just scan an entire IP range and tell me who's vulnerable. It's like, for example, I used to give this example. I even showed online. I put a server on, onto the desk and I plug in the internet. It was less than 20 minutes somebody was trying to brute force my SSH. Less than 20 minutes. That's how fast these bots work. And they just scan and keep scanning and keep scanning. So don't be part of the easy task. Don't let them make, make your don't make it easy for them. So try and change the name. There is also a plugin to do that. Okay? Don't do it through the database. Don't go and modify it yourself. Do it through a plugin. Okay? It's a safe way to do it. And try to change the admin URL. How many of you, okay, let's be honest here. How many of you still use WP admin? Yeah. Okay, try and change that. That's also a plugin because why, like I said, it becomes a commonality. People know. Why is, why is your admin page WP admin? Right? So you open up more, you make it easy for them. Security is not a uh, silver bullet. Security is supposed to be something to make it harder for people to get into your system. It's not going to prevent it 100%. If somebody tells you this, they have a product that can prevent security, they're probably just lying. There's no such thing. It's a matter of time before it gets broken. But our job is to make it hard for somebody to... Oh, thank you so much. Would 
would be nicer if it was a beer, but you know. It's <laughs> awesome, thank you. Very nice of you. <coughs> so change the admin, you can log in URL if you can, okay? And salts, uh, everyone familiar with hashing and how salts work? Should I just quickly go through what that means? Hashing is a process of taking a text, like say, my name is Sanjay, that's a text. When I put it onto a PowerPoint presentation, you can read it, therefore it is visible. Hashing is a process of putting encryption on top, on top of it, that it becomes unreadable to machine or human, unless you know the password and you use the hashing algorithm to, to match. So what happens is with hash, even if somebody downloads the passwords, and this, I'm telling you, there is this um, very famous movie website, I'm not, obviously you know there's only two, but one of them literally still today, 2018, lo and behold, still store passwords in clear text. Okay, I'm not going to go there, but they don't use WordPress, by the way, they, they built it themselves, but let's, let's not freak uh, them out and not freak us out, but if you use uh, passwords that are visible, if somebody gets a copy of the database, passwords are visible. And there's a good chance that password is also going to be used from an, to another site. Like for example, I'm pretty sure, some, how many of you, I mean let's be honest, how many of us reuse passwords more than one site? We do, that's a fact. So the problem is, when you have a least secure password aside, that same password can then be used somewhere else. You see what I mean? So, you not, obviously your bank password is secure because you've got people to, you know, taking care of security. But you also put the same password for another site, same username, same password, and it's not a secure site, it's not done well. For example, that movie site that I was telling you about, right? And somebody hacks that, they can actually try and access different types of websites by guessing what are the places you might be visiting. The first thing I would do is try and use Gmail. The second thing I would do is try and use Hotmail or some other uh, common services that everyone likely to use. So be careful with that. So uh, hashing basically encrypts that, hides it away. So sorts is a process of adding more complexity to it, okay? Adding more complexity to the uh, encryption. So, use and enable a password policy. <coughs> enable HTTPS, this is something you are all familiar with, I guess. And again, some of the uh, uh, plugins that you can think of. Okay, quick question. Which is more secure? Who says one? Raise your hand. Which password is more, is better? Number three. Number three. Two. Who says number, who says number one? Let's raise the hand. Who says number one? Who says number two? Raise your hand. Who says number three? Raise your hand. Okay, the answer is number two. Yes. It will take a few billion years to crack that password. But you see, you see, check this out, right? Which password is easier to remember? Number two, right? Number two. Oh, right, okay. Forget about one now. That's <laughs> invalidated lies. But number two is easy to remember. It's a text. So the thing is, the problem with number three is you will not remember. And guess what you will do? Post-it notes. Right? Yeah, right inside your hand, on your hand, or behind your skin, with that. So that, so it's actually interesting because people think that the last one is always a secure one, it's not. Number two is more secure, it is computationally more difficult, far more difficult to break than number three. Game over. <laughs> Authorization and loading. So I'm going to have to speed up a bit when time is running short. But uh, it's important for you to also audit, audit your site and use these plugins again. Turn firewalls on. Uh, turn access logs on. Access logs is who logged in and what time they log in and stuff like that. So all of these plugins do already have them. You just check box, enable them, off you go. Uh, geo geofencing for admin folders, that means you can actually say, I will I'll only allow WP admin to a certain uh, region, for example, just Malaysia. You can just limit that. In fact, one of the things that I did with our systems is I limit, because I, I don't have customers outside of Malaysia, I just limit my WordPress site to Malaysia. Why do I need to serve out someone outside? So, geofencing helps. Okay, you reduce your attack, attack vector, the size of your attack. Quality coding, I cannot stress this enough. <coughs> when people write plugins and themes and so on, please follow WordPress guidelines. I know some of you watched a, a brilliant speech by an entrepreneur this morning and he was talking about how to, to make business from WordPress. So it's our responsibility as persons who do these plugins and themes to follow guidelines and to also audit your code. Because it's our responsibility when somebody installs it, they will then inherit the security that you do or don't do. Okay? <clears throat> Avoid side loading of plugins. I, I remember one guy said, Oh, you know, I, I can get theme for us for our themes for free if I go to this one particular website. I wouldn't do that if I were you. 
because somebody could ins inject code that actually could track stuff or download the passwords or, or decrypt the passwords and send them to, to an email or, or, or telemetry, you know, connect back to the attacker server. So use proper theme sites. Do not sideload them, do not do anything funny like that. Try and use the ones from the marketplace. Okay, that's, uh, the, that's quality coding in there. <coughs> Okay, spam prevention is also important. Spam <coughs> on your blog can literally reduce your Google ranking. So pay attention to anti-spamming, okay? Try and put an anti-spam product in there. So these are some of the uh, sample products that you can, uh, plugins you can use to prevent spam and also all the other things that I've mentioned there. Monitoring and visibility, although monitoring is technically not security, but what is security? Security also, one of the things of security besides data breach, blah, 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 it's also availability of your site. If your site is not online, it could mean it is unplugged or it could mean it got hacked. So one of those things. So it's important for us to know, or you to know, or us to know, that, you know, to, to know whether our website is running right now. So like, for example, I ask you right now, how many of you 100% confident your, your site is running right now? Not by, by chance, not by chance, not by, oh, I think it's running, but by fact. That's only one person who raised their hand, so maybe less than 10. So put on monitoring, guys. There's plugins available, put on monitoring. If your site has a problem, it will have uh, uh, email sent out to you. Or you can use a third party site. I will show you, in the, if you download my slides, there are some links on free sites that actually uh, give you free monitoring of your website. So if your website is inaccessible, you get an email notification. Okay? It's important to keep your site up and running. This is part of security. Monitoring is part of security. And here are some of the plugins you can use. So if something is wrong with your site, it goes down. You can actually use one of these plugins. It will inform you that the site is down. You can, you're on the same site. These guys do perfectly fine. Okay? It means you restore on the same site. Updates. Uh, amazingly enough, um, I'm, I'm not going to say the statistics too loud, but there is close to 80% of government-run WordPress sites that are still using version 2 and 3. <laughs> no kidding. And this is huge. It, it just rings all kinds of bells and flags in my head. But that's, that's the fact of life. Do your updates, and where do you find your updates? It's so simple. In WordPress, you have that icon that pops up right on the left side that says one update, and please click and do the updates. They are not. They are not to make your site fancier. They make. They are meant to make your site more functional and more secure. Okay, but you do have occurrences where you have big updates, like version four to five, and five is going to be released soon. So you might not want to do big updates. You want to do it on your test site first. Then, if you're comfortable, go ahead and do it in your production site. So some of the uh, plugins that can help. Of course, you have the WordPress dashboard itself, which will tell you something. Uh, you know, some team of so plugins or WordPress itself needs an update. Okay, it will flag it out, it will show you a red color icon. <clears throat> and of course, if you're running your own service, you need to update Windows Update, AppGate, or YAM updates. So auditing your site, this is uh, this is quite new. A lot of new uh, a lot of people are offering this uh, either internally from the plugin store or from external, they can actually scan your site to see if there's any vulnerabilities. So these include free service providers and also some paid. One. So uh, I would suggest consider and look for both. It's as easy as putting in Google WordPress uh, security scanner or putting in Bing, and I'm not a Google advocate here, but putting in Bing or WordPress, uh, WordPress security scanner and look at some of the options and free ones that come up. Okay, uh, I've got some recommendations as well. Uh, but these are, these are meant more for local scanning, which means I scan myself from the WordPress itself. Um, there's good and bad of this, but I would still recommend you to do double prong, which means you do local scans using the plugins and also an external scan. Moving very swiftly, uh, this is this is big. Uh, I've got I've got people literally crying. I'm, I'm not kidding you. They literally cry and call me at 2 a.m. on Sunday when I'm you know I had a bit of drinks. By a bit means I can't wake up. <laughs> By can't wake up means I'm unconscious. <laughs> Unconscious means I cannot even hear the phone ringing. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But seriously, people call me at like huge denial of service, distributed denial of service. Everyone knows what this is. Uh, someone needs to clarify what a DDoS is, distributed denial of service. I can make it simple for you. 
uh, your website runs on port 80, for example, or 443, HTTP or HTTPS, right? So a legitimate request is going to those ports. When I access your web WordPress site, HTTP responds back with the data, HTTPS responds back with the data. So a de distributed denial of service attack sends thousands of requests to your site, causing your site to respond to the attacker rather than to your customer or to your people who patron your website. So a distributed denial of service is actually a legitimate access, but designed to stop legit people to access your website. So what do you do? My easiest advice is unplug the cable, but you know we can do much more. So there are things like um, 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 anti-DDoS uh, options that you can use, something like Cloudflare. Have you heard of those guys? So Cloudflare is something you can start to do, it's free, and they have built-in uh, DDoS protection. So go right ahead, explore Cloudflare at the end of this talk. Okay, put your web, if your WordPress site is part of your pocket, it makes money for you, then it's fine for you to consider putting it into Cloudflare. So some of the examples there, AWS, Azure, and I guess some other providers as well, maybe Exabyte as well, I'm not sure exactly, but they might have anti-DDoS protection. Okay, consider using them. Cloudflare is the easiest to do, you just modify the DNS. It takes a bit of uh, knowledge on how to do that, but you know, there's super step-by-step -step guides that will help you. Number 10, very quickly running through them. I think you, you know these things. You, you are very familiar with this thing. Turn on firewalls, no option. IDS IPS is an option. Intrusion prevention system, intrusion detection system, antivirus, even on Linux, even on Macs, by the way, put in uh, antivirus, anti-malware, because you have things like crypto, uh, crypto uh, malware, you've got things like ransomware that can come and wreck havoc because they don't care about the operating system. They are actually scripts that run and execute the code from your laptop, using your laptop as the resource to generate a lot of traffic and data. Um, use load balancers if you can. Cloudflare is an example of a software-based load balancer. Once you be on Cloudflare, you're part of the CDN, the Cloud Distribution Network, which is worldwide. So you're not limited to a certain, like you could, your server could be in Malaysia, but if you deploy Cloudflare, your server is then replicated, and I'm putting it in a simple term, replicated throughout the world. Time's up, yay, okay, I'm also done. So to wrapping it up, to, to wrap it up, uh, let's just go back very quickly, Sam, with one minute. Uh, let's recap, so first thing is start right, choose the right provider, or choose whether you want to do it yourself. Two, ensure you have things like two-form authentication. Three, um, ensure that even after you've done that, you have logging and auditing turned on. And four, make sure you, you when you do coding, especially developers, code following WordPress guidelines. Uh, five, make sure you do have some monitoring. Like I told you, there are free tools, either on-site, on, on the WordPress plugin itself, or a third-party tool that you can use to scan. Okay, so then they will send you an email if your site's down. Backup and restore, again, the keyword here is restore, not backup. Everyone does backup, but that's your restore as well. Uh, do updates, do updates, of course, that's the easiest one. Everyone, I think, hopefully does that. And if you have colleagues or friends who do not do that in the government, please knock them on the door and on their head. Not just the door, okay? Tell them to do the update. And audit your site, there are free tools out there. Yeah, there's one from these guys uh, from my company, it's called Awas, it's a free tool, you can go ahead and try it. Uh, let them scan and give you a result of how secure your WordPress site is. Uh, do some level of distributed denial of service uh, prevention, things like Cloudflare, and of course your local security. With that, here are the links. Don't write them down, we can download the slides, of course you can find, and these are really good ones, I filtered all of them to make sure it's really relevant and easy to use for our team here, our guys here, okay? And special mentions, uh, these are the external monitoring that I was telling you about. You can use them for free. Again, don't worry about taking pictures, guys. You can download the slides. Um, you can see it uh, directly from the, from the slide itself. So with that, I hope we all consider security as part of our responsibility. It's not an option. I hope it's not an option. I hope at the end of this talk, you do one of the 10 things, and I've achieved my goal of helping the community to be a little bit more secure. With that, thank you. All right.